have chapter 18 of A Mile Unbound. After dinner, Mumtaz led me up the marble staircase into a carpeted landing. The second floor was as big as the first floor. Nasreen Baji's room was the first one on the right, just off the landing. Stepping inside, I saw a white bedroom set with cream sheets. A matching white armoire and dresser were in the distance. A makeup table rested next to a closed bathroom door. Light glowed from beneath its slats. I followed Muntaz into an attached room that turned out to be an enormous closet filled with Nasreen's Baji's clothes and shoes. Through the closet, we entered another room, rectangular and compact. The walls were a pale blue with a border of elephants and giraffes. This is where you'll be staying, Muntaz said. Here? I looked around at the nursery. This is my room? There are many who would do a lot for a room in this part of the house. Now put your things, put away your things, and then meet Nasreen, she said before leaving. I thought of the stuffy windowless concrete room from earlier today. Muntaz was right. This room had air conditioning and a blue tiled bathroom with a porcelain sink and chrome handles like I'd seen on the television. I unpacked my suitcase and glanced at the door, wondering what lay in store for me on the other side. The light still glowed from beneath the closed bathroom door when I stepped back into her room. I glanced at my satchel. I'd forgotten to put it away, but I did need to call my mother just to let her know I was safe. I took out my phone, but a knock on the bedroom door made me jump. Jawad Sahib stepped inside. Bored already, he said, looking at my phone. Is this how it will be here? This man lurking around every bend and curve? I want to let my mother know that I'm all right. Your obligations are to me now. He grabbed the phone from me. The more you learn how to leave your backward ways behind, the easier things will be for you. Your days of being an idle farm girl are over. Idle farm girl? Backward ways? I stared at my phone in his hands. My mother would tell me to be quiet right now and ignore these words. But how could he tear me? How could he tear me from my house, take away the only connection that I had to it, and then pronounce me backward? The words couldn't be stopped. I've never been idle. I went to school. I cared for my sisters. I helped my family. My voice broke. The ones you took me away from. He looked at me as though watching a field mouse develop the skill of speech. His eyes narrowed. <clears throat> the bathroom door opened. Jawad, what's going on? I'm telling her how things will be. That's my job, isn't it? She walked up to him. If you take that away, what is there for me to do? You're right. He kissed her cheek. His anger from moments earlier vanished. They chatted a bit longer. He told her he was heading out now. Law was staying back at this time. He asked her to keep an eye on him. He told her he would stop by her favorite sweet shop on his way home. He promised to call. And then he tucked my phone into his pocket and walked away, taking the one lifeline I had to my family with him. Nazarene Baji walked to her makeup table and sat down on a cushioned bench. I watched her, uncertain what to do. Would I ask her now how I could help? Or wait for her to tell me what she needed? Was I supposed to stand with my hands to the side or fold it in front? The list of things I didn't know was endless. I stood frozen by the door. Nazarene Baji tapped her fingers against the table and then glanced into the mirror. I could use some help, she told me. And when I walked up to her, she nodded at the brush on the table. I picked up the wooden brush and parted Nasreen's Baji's hair. I'd done this for my mother and sisters countless times, but never performed such an intimate task on a stranger. Nasreen Baji's hair was straight and brown with threads of gray. My mother's hair was black light, like the night sky falling over her shoulders in waves. Last time I brushed my mother's hair, taking care to gently tease out the knots with my fingers, she hung lullabies to Safa, who lay curled in her lap. Thinking of my mother kept my hand steady. Did Mumtaz tell you what you were expected to do in this household, she asked. No, I told her. You are here for me and anything I may need. You bring my meals and you wait on me. When there's company, you wait on all of us. You massage my head if it hurts and bring me my migraine medication. You will sleep with your door open, so if I need you, you can hear me. Understood? I nodded. Before she could say more, the phone resting on the makeup table vibrated. My husband, she picked up the phone. Khan Sahib. I was so afraid of Jawad Sahib, I'd forgotten about his father, the monster in my childhood dreams, the boogeyman our mothers used to threaten us with when we were slow to finish our meals. He slept in this very room. Thought you forgot to phone me, she said when she answered. Gazba called this morning. She switched her dinner party to next month for us. I told her we'll be there. She 
She listened and smiled. Yes, glad something can wrench you from politics. They spoke a little longer before she hung up. He's away more than he's here, off with my eldest boys in Islamabad, chasing politics at his age. Can you imagine? I tried to mask my relief. At least there was that. The man who haunted my childhood dreams was hardly ever here. You must be missing your family, she said. This can't be easy. Unlike her sons, her words contained no malice, and I nodded. I can relate. Of course, I married into the family. But no matter the circumstances, missing your family feels the same. You're from Nabai Shak, aren't you? Yes. I'm from Benway Shak. Benway. But that's a ten-minute walk from my house. It's on the other side of the market. True, she said. You know the Morali family? I nodded. The Morali family was a huge clan, scattered over many of the nearby villages. That's my family. Now that she mentioned it, I could see the family resemblance in her straight dark hair and her high cheekbones. And Jam and Sana were my classmates, I told her. My sister's children. Her eyes brightened. How are they? They were doing well last time I saw them. I said, I've known them since I was five. Smart girls. Khan Sahib will pay for college when the time comes. I'll make sure he does. Tell me, is Masood Baba still running the produce store at the market? He was my father's closest friend. Shakat, his son, runs it now. Shakat? Her expression fell. Well, that's a shame. He does a good job, I said. His prices are fair, and he sells the best produce. Yes, I'm sure, she said. It's just that I knew him when we were little. He had different dreams back then. I tried picturing Shakut as a child sharing his dreams with a woman in an emerald earring sitting across from me, but I couldn't. But how did you end up here? Najin Baji began laughing. I stiffened. Why did I say that out loud? Blurting things out used to get me in trouble, too, when I was your age, she said. Just be careful. My son did not inherit my sense of humor. Our marriage surprised many people, she continued. Khan Sahib's family is distantly related to the Moralis. He saw me at a family wedding. His parents wanted a bride from a wealthy family, of course. But when you're the youngest, you get your way. Noreen Baji told me about her family back in her village. And it turned out we had other neighbors in common. She was so easy to talk to. And the more she spoke, the less intimidating she seemed. It was the strangest thing to find within these walls someone who was more like myself than I could have imagined. For the first time since I arrived, I felt a little less afraid.